Yeah, it's, it's, a, it, it's a story. And uh, what do you want to do with that story, first of all? I mean, what, what is uh, something which you have to, when you, uh, whenever you work on Mozart, uh, this is something which is so universal about all instrumental music by Mozart. Uh, the, it's actually an instrumentalized form of operatic music. Almost all of music, apart maybe from some chorals for, for the mass, then it, it becomes a, a sort of a, what do you call it, spiritual church music. Some of the spiritual church music is true, has nothing to do with opera. But most of his instrumental work, and definitely the, the violin concerto, uh, belong to those which is about opera. So when you've got an opera, what do you have for every note? You have a? Uh, uh, a character? Or character, yes, voice. and? A voice, which means? Text. text. It's yeah. a text, is it? exactly. So almost anything in opera has a text. Yeah. yeah. So, or at least a meaning for the whole sentence. So if the, this one was the first thing was a sentence, you know? Yeah. Then <laughs> what, what kind of sentence do you imagine for this? Um, well, first I thought um, of something festive. Yes. Um, and then uh, something more dampened. Okay. And a bit more thoughtful, like... Um, yeah. It's like more, hmm. And then. <laughs> okay, okay, fine, 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 fine. Okay, okay. So, so, you, so the first two chords, you want it to be festive? Um, yeah, I mean, the first one more than the second one. Okay, so. Uh, okay. So, you. And the second one, what do you want? Do you want to already change? Or. Yeah, a little bit. And. And then. And then. And then okay, so it's like. <laughs> Hello, and then I become very thoughtful. Yeah, something like this. No, no, it's fine, it's fine, 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 fine. Um, it's just a little bit, maybe too much interpretation in oh, okay. four bars. But you know, you can do it. You can do it. Uh, but um, uh, you, you have to be so obvious, Mozart. Whatever you want to do, okay. uh, that it's clear come out. So um, if you want to do it that way, can you do already a dynamic difference? You can do more diminuendo then. Try that. Okay. Much more diminuendo. Exactly. You see, you see, and there's no diminuendo written in the music. Right. But if you want to change the character, you've got to do something. I mean, just thinking it's not enough. Yeah. Um, and uh, I was just saying before, uh, especially with Viennese music, you've got, uh, you know, if you want to reduce sound, you can reduce the speed of the bow. You can reduce the pressure or the weight. What else can you do? Sure. Yes, yes. OK, three, you can go nearer to the fingerboard. And what's the fourth way? the left hand? No, 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 right hand. There's one very, very, very important, this is what you missed, you see? But yes, can, yeah. I should have. It's okay, it's okay. So it's only, it can be explained in a few seconds. Okay. It's reducing the hair. Oh, okay, yeah. And, uh, yeah, and this is, the, no, everybody, if you ask a young violinist, how can you reduce the sound making a piano? I always get three answers. Very rarely get, do I get the fourth answer which they forget about. But of course, when I tell them, it's like, oh yeah, of course, I know. Uh, it's, it's reducing hair, you know? As a certain, if you do. It's basically, then it changes color. I, I, I wouldn't, I personally, if I would play that concerto, wouldn't change color yet in the first four bars, oh, okay. you know, but I would, I would make it a little bit more festive for the entire entry. Uh, but it, it doesn't matter. But it's it just that, that sort of thing. Uh, it can it, it can be even more uh, more uh, different. Uh, think of the let's do the um, the development. Where you going to sad? Yeah. Can you play from there? Yeah. Fine, fine, that's good, good, good. Um, it's, it's certainly at a very high level. It's not boring or anything like that. But you play that twice. Uh, what do you want to achieve with that? And do you want twice the same, or do you want the second one differently? Um, yes, I'd 
tried, <laughs> but um, yeah. so basically I tried to do, and then the second time. Ah, okay. Um, this uh, to make expressive expressions in music, it can also work to say, okay, first time I'm going to do a crescendo, second time I'm going to do diminuendo, and all this. But this is still a technical way of thinking. So what do you want to do emotionally? Well, I try to um, give more the second time, basically, direction to the more mad part. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, yeah, yeah. Know. But uh, try to think of a text. Wh what is this, you know? Um, is that a complaining or is it? Yeah, I... I, I okay, just take, find me a good text for complaining. Uh, okay. Um, oh man, it's so hot. <laughs> it's so hot. Okay, well, it's, uh, it's so hot. You know. Okay, fine. It, anything like that. And then the second time, do you, do you say the same thing or do you say something else? Um, mm. I think I'm saying something else. Okay. Well, you know. Yeah. It's it's it could be whatever it is, but you know. And, or it, it could be, first one, it could actually be angry. You know, it could be the man in the house, you know, and it's like, what's happened with the air conditioning? <laughs> it's hot. Mm. And then somebody, you know, apologizes. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I forgot, I'm sorry. And, and then suddenly you feel, oh, maybe I was a little bit too over the top, you know, just over somebody forgetting to switch on the air conditioning. So you say, like, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, I, I'm... Whatever it is, but uh, you can make things much more, uh, you know, uh, in music it's always, you know, necessary to find a little bit more exaggeration, which, which gives the, the extra, extra color, you know, and uh, with, with Mozart, one hand is the, the, the style thing, um, when, you, when you play, actually I heard an accent on your F sharp, a little bit. If that is intentional, it's fine, you know. But uh, the, the other thing with Mozart is always this bit of text, yeah. So when you've got uh, like an, <laughs> this is a tirum, parum, parum. You know, this uh, you need a word for it, like uh, I don't know, it could be my dear or something. You know, I mean, in fact, if it was in English, my dear. You know, my dear, my dear, it would be, then you can play Toti, Toti, because it's my dear. Uh, whereas if it was uh, German, if a Liebling, Liebling, you know, then it's a diminuendo, yeah? And most of the music is it's Italian, so it could be cara, cara means uh, darling in Italian. So cara, cara, you know, uh, it's a bit diminuendo. So uh, the, the sort of the style of the music goes always with a text, which you would imagine with it, but, uh, yeah, just try again. Try again the, the, the middle part. Stop, 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 okay. In master classes very often, and this is very rightly so, that most students bring their best piece. <laughs> um, I mean, in general, you know, you, you, I always liked the way you played Mozart, so, you know, uh, when I asked uh, to, because I like teaching Mozart, and I, I asked somebody 
to play the Mozart in my master class. So they assign obviously somebody who plays Mozart. Um, if somebody plays Mozart not in style, uh, and they participate, and of course it's even easier to teach a lot of about <laughs> Mozart and style. In your case, most of the stylistic issues, you know, is, is absolutely correct. It's already very beautiful. So, uh, you know, there's, not, and there's no point in correcting things which work. Uh, so, in, or in other words, with you, we, we can already talk about extremely high level development of, you know, musical interpretation <laughs> of that, okay. which is good for you. Um, so I thought the first two phrases went extremely beautifully. Um, and so, but you've got the, the, the um, where's the transition to C major? Yeah, exactly. So, and we've got basically the whole thing was D minor, the music, and it's then suddenly C major. Yeah, yeah. So, so. It's already not bad what you're doing, but what we want something to get this extreme revelation of, 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 of difference, you know? So something was wrong, because this is, when you're talking about it's too hot, and uh, this is the moment when, where the air conditioning starts working. <laughs> it's like, suddenly this cool breeze, like, ah, suddenly it's cool, it's no longer hot, you know? So, You know, it's still hot, you know, and then suddenly, um, ah, and it's cool. Or you got the delivery of ice cream. Well, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter what it is, but it changed. It was before the life was horrible. It was hot, the air conditioning is broke, and the, uh, you know, your husband forgot to switch it or repair it or whatever, you know, it doesn't matter. Uh, um, it's, you're upset, yeah? This, I mean, could be, or it could be sad or upset, so if it is the, the contents of the story. And it's, it really doesn't matter what the story is, you know, but with Mozart, you always need a story, and if you have a story in your mind and then start practicing and organizing it, it will always be interesting to listen to. And, and uh, going back again to the competition, um, overall, uh, because everybody played the violin so damn well in this competition, you know, we as a juror, at some point had to even stop thinking, you know, who is the better violinist, but whose interpretation is more interesting, you know? And even then, this is purely subjective, what somebody finds interesting. It's like a conversation or how, whose speech is more interesting and all that. So I would never claim to be right or wrong about anything, but still, you know, making music interesting is, is obviously something which is a big issue for all young artists. And uh, so, yeah, with this imagining story, okay, so j just play it again, thinking it was hot, and it's still hot, actually, because of this light. <laughs> yeah. But just imagine as you play the C major part, you know, from... Uh, from um, <laughs> the problem is solved. And then, you know, mm, you know, suddenly you smile, and everything is fantastic, yeah? yeah. And then... Mm, and then smile. <laughs> Maybe even more exciting, you know, where when you're first you smile, everything is good, and then you even go out to your friend, you know, and you sort of embrace him, like, it's fantastic, you repaired my air condition. You know, anything like this. Okay, <laughs> let's try uh, again, yeah? No.
Can you play a little bit of the cadenza because we have five more minutes? Okay. okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, with this cadenza, can you try to play it again, not using everything full bow? <laughs> okay. It's too much again, you know, it's... it's it. Okay, okay. Actually, you know, this is this, the, the other thing which it's very interesting because the question was about how to make music interesting. And uh, already by deciding for every note you, you study of any piece, any repertoire, to even think about when I'm going to use a faster bow, when I'm going to use a slow bow, you know, that can also make it much more sophisticated sounding. And, you know, even that little difference you did, you know, made, made your performance sound more, more three-dimensional, yeah? Um, one, one little other thing, uh, although, you know, I mean, uh, your technique works in general uh, quite well, you know, you, you're not stiff uh, most of the time. Um, at the moment, one other general technique thing, which uh, applies to you, but applies to many violinists, is um, it's about the articulation of the left hand. And uh, at the moment, it, it works very well for you, but uh, there's some people, musicians, who who seem to have a very relaxed left hand, but they have a... Can you hear the, the, the hit on the, on the fingerboard? It depends on the piece, you know, when you've got a very slow, if you're playing Meditation Details or something like that, you know, you shouldn't play... In, you know, you don't want to hear any, any of this click. Uh, but when you're playing anything, including Mozart, you know, like in the... It's, it's nice to have this a little uh, at, extra articulation from your left hand. And at the moment, you are playing very well, and you, but it's a... You're just pressing down the left hand. And the difference between uh, uh, when, you, when it's, it's about the release after you hit the note. And uh, this is, you can, you can just practice. Can you just practice? Doing a, uh, yeah. And uh, I mean, I will not spend too much on this, but um, you know, it's like when you're playing tennis, it's impossible to hit the ball like this, right? right. So what do you do before you hit the ball? I, uh, uh, I don't know the word in English. English, it's retake. Yeah, re yeah. yeah it's retake. And um, actually, this was some observation I made when you watched like, the video of all the great violinists. And you know, my left hand is by no means fantastic. But uh, if you look at all the fantastic violinists, you know, I mean, from Heifetz onwards, who have a fantastic left hand, they always, when they play something virtuosic, have a little retake in their motion. So... So the finger goes up before it goes down, a little bit. I'm sure it's the same for the piano, no? Yeah. yeah, exactly. And if you don't have a retake, and this is a general thing, you can just just put it in your head. You know, you don't. You're generally a very good violinist. You know, there's nothing majorly wrong, or anything like that. But if I was going to comment your left hand, I thought. Uh, some